Hey, coaches, welcome to another Football Scoop Online Clinic. Today we've got Brantley County High School defensive coordinator Eddie Fields who's going to be talking to us about motivating the defense in an offensive world. So, Coach Fields, the floor is yours, man. Okay. Thanks a lot, Coach. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. Football Scoop letting me get on here and talk a little bit. Uh, like you said, I'm a Brantley County High School defensive coordinator. So, uh, Brantley County is just a small rural school in Georgia. We're about – uh, half an hour, 45 minutes from the coast, uh, school of about 1,100. All of our kids play both ways. All uh, Our coaching staff is split, though. So uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about being a defensive coach, kind of what, what I see as an offensive world. So got my uh, information on there. I don't have Twitter, uh, Facebook, any of that. So if you get a hold of me uh, or you have any questions, uh, my email is on there, and you guys could all check back on that. So. Here we go. Okay, first I just kind of want to put my family out there and thank uh, thank my family. I've bounced around quite a bit, so uh, my wife's kind of been along for the ride or whatever. Been married 17 years, so I put this little quote up here by Joe Gibbs that I read in his book, and he said, "There's just no bad coaches or no bad wives in coaching. They all either leave or they're good and they stay around." So I, I got a good one, and I'm happy about that. And then. Uh, you see my son there. Uh, he's named after my high school football coach. So I just wanted to kind of give those guys a little bit of a shout out uh, for the difference they've made in my life. Uh, really appreciate what they've done for me as far as kind of grown into a coach and a man. So my son's named after my head coach. Brian Sprunger was his name. My son's uh, first name is Brian. And then our defensive coordinator, his name was David Lockshire. So my son's middle name is David. But football's been really good to me and to my family. So I just kind of want to put that out there to start this thing out. Okay, um, <coughs> excuse me. My background, you can see on there, and I don't need to probably read it all, but I bounced around. I've been in five states, uh, originally from Indiana, but kind of enjoyed the South, so I bounced around a little bit. Spent time uh, at Division Three Manchester University in North Manchester, Indiana. I uh, was lucky to work with a guy named Shannon Griffith, a uh, really good guy who gave me an opportunity there. And I was also a head coach uh, at Fort Wayne Southside, uh, for three years as well. So got a pretty extensive background as far as it goes. Uh, I was, the other day I was on the forums and I was looking at it. And one of the questions was, how do you know when you're the old coach? And if you go back to that family picture of me and then you see this beard coming in all gray, I think I might've crossed over that line to the old coach category. But that's kind of my background there. Uh, here's kind of the guts of the presentation is coaching defense and motiv motivating defensive players in an offensive world. Uh, and I just got some stuff up there. Uh, every head coach I've worked for has been also the offensive coordinator. And um, they all say they don't favor the offense. And I think they all kind of lie just a little bit. Uh, and I say that as a joke. And I know we got over here this kind of over where it says a joke. But it, it's kind of a joke. But it's, it's kind of serious, too, I think. Uh, the last job I was at, I was at Hannah Pamlico High School in South Carolina. And when I got there, our head coach is a young offensive guy and a great guy. But every day we had pre-practice, it was always offense. And all of our players had played both ways. Uh, and one day I go to the office and I say, hey, coach, uh, I know you want us to get better. Can we split up and maybe do pre-practice, a couple days defense, a couple days offense? And he kind of laughed. And you say, coach, I'm sorry, I just never really thought about uh, putting the defense out there at that point. He said, just really, just really love the offense. So just things like that. Where I'm at now, I know uh, our head coach's name is Jeff Cannon. He's a great guy. But uh, when I got there, offense always practiced first. And uh, I'm in South Georgia. So when I got there, it's hot. And so we get kids after they went offense for an hour, and they were just dragging and struggling. And when we got them, we really try to do our best to push them uh, give everything but they'd already went out an hour on offense so they, they were dying so we talked to him one day and also just really open and good about it coach can we can we get the defense first a couple days a week and and he was good about it and it made a difference for us but I think a lot of times when that head coach is also the offense coordinator I don't think they're out to get the defense by any means but definitely uh their priority falls kind of in there so along with that I got on here that the kids generally want to play offense. Uh, I've got an offensive line background, so those guys may be the exception. 
But in general, uh, I think the offense has really been emphasized and they got the stats and they got all that. So my big thing when I'm a defensive coordinator has been how do I get those guys uh, to want to play defense? And how do I make defense special so those guys don't just go in the game, but they, they want to be on that side of the ball? Uh, something that we've really put a lot of time into. So uh, this is one of the quotes I put when I kind of filled out the Google form to potentially do this. But I worked with this guy who was a bounce around Georgia a little bit. He's just kind of my liaison into Georgia football, uh, kind of the culture down here. But his name is John Chance and uh, says it all the time. He just says, hey, defense is always going to get screwed. If it's raining, uh, defense will be the guys in this time, things like that. So just something that he's kind of jokes about, but uh, something that kind of showed up. So I think uh, when you're looking at defensive football, there's a lot of challenges, but I, I think that's what kind of makes it fun too. When you when you can connect through those challenges with the kids, uh, it's really rewarding. So I got on a quote from the uh, Statue of Liberty, the give me your hungry, tired, you're poor, huddle masses, yearning to breathe free. And I kind of just put on there, give me your bad grass, your coach with meeting during any time, your receiver who can't catch, uh, your huddle mass is yearning to play deep. Because I, I think there's some truth to that a little bit. When a lot of places I've been, uh, the offense has the good grass, the defense is kind of over there in the weeds or whatever. We get those receivers who can't catch to come play DB for us, the fullbacks who can't block, come play our D line and things like that. So just kind of a little bit of a joke and play on that. But I, I think there's some truth in that as well. But really just anything we can do to focus on and highlight defense, make it a special experience. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Our defensive priorities, uh, these are the big things we talk about. And it doesn't necessarily go directly into what I'm talking about, but I wanted to put it out there. These are our three things we really highly emphasize with our kids. First is play fast. Uh, we want to fly around. And I know everybody wants to fly around, but we've kind of went to emphasizing playing fast rather than great effort or hustle or things like that. I think we can quantify it a little bit better. So when we talk about playing fast, you can turn on that film and that kid is either slow or fast. We, we tell them there's no excuse. It, that, it doesn't matter if you had a bad day or you had a bad test or you don't feel well. When you turn on that film, are you fast or are you slow? Uh, and we got, to, we got to fast instead of effort because you never knew with effort. Was he, was he thinking too much? What was he doing? Uh, he might have been trying, but he might have been trying too hard and slow him down a little. So is it play fast. The next thing we do is take the ball. We're going to put a ton of pressure on the ball. Again, something you can measure. We, we measure pressures on the ball in our film, both practice and games. And then finish mean. When we end the play, uh, we want to make sure that guy's felt us, whether we're getting off the block, whether we're making a tackle. Uh, we want to make sure that guy knows that we've been there. Uh, one thing we really do emphasize as well is mean but clean. We don't want to play dirty, but we do want to finish mean. Uh, there was a video in the hawk tackling a couple years after the first video came out where they do like a squeeze and lift and drive. And that's something we've kind of implemented, but uh, something we emphasize is that finish me. We want guys to know that we've been in the play. So everything we do is linked back into that. Uh, our scheme, we want to make sure it's sound, but also we don't want to put in so much that we can't get those three things done. So uh, that's, that's kind of our philosophy. And you see it up there, play defense, not defenses. Uh, we we want to get out there and emphasize and highlight and hit those three things pretty well. So, okay, this is a big long list. These are all the things we are doing to make sure that defensive players are mo motivated within our program. And I'll kind of hit each one of these individually. But we, we really try to do a lot of things to make sure playing defense is special where we're at. Um, all those kids that we coach. Uh, we want them at the end of the day to really feel like they were part of something special. They want, we want them to think the experience is something that they can't get anywhere else. So these are all kind of things we do, and we'll kind of go through and hit each of these individually. Okay. Uh, this is just a little disclaimer I put on here, because everything we're going to talk about is really positive. Uh, but you guys know that it's not always positive. So there's going to be some things that go on there that are consequences and kids aren't going to like and kids aren't going to necessarily come around to right away. But one thing I tell our kids is 
if I can't coach you, I can't play you. If you can't do what I need you to do to get yourself better, if you can't play on the team's terms, uh, then I can't play. So these are just some of those things I wanted to hit and emphasize. Uh, I can't coach you if you have bad attendance. If you're not there every day, regardless of what the issue is, if you, if you can't be there every day so I can coach you, so the assistant coaches can coach you, then you can't play. And our head coach is really good about that. Uh, he's got a standard that's set. and He's got a, a standard in place and a procedure in place that if they're not there, they don't get to play. Uh, that's just my first thing. If you're not there, I can't coach you, you can't play. Second thing is I don't coach buttholes. Uh, it, life's too short. When we go out to football, it should be an experience that enhances our days, not, not makes them worse. A little example there is our best player on defense this year, uh, there are times where he was a butthole. And I had to kick him out of my drills. And he, he would kind of be lost there for a minute. But I'm not – you're not going to come in and treat people poorly. You're not going to come in and not do the things we wanted. Uh, just an example of that is one day it's hot. So he walked about 30 yards away after he had done his portion of the drill, stood in the sun. And then when it's his turn up again, he's over there in the sun. I, I had to kick him out of the drill. And I, I wasn't sure what he was going to do. Uh, but you, you can't be in our drill. If you're not going to do it our way, you can't be in it. And then in regard to that, if I can't play you, or sorry, if I can't coach you, I can't play. So uh, just little things like that. Now, there's a way for them to come back around. But in the time being, uh, you're not going to be a butthole to your teammates or your coaches. And if so, you're going you're gonna to go over on the sideline or you're going to go stand somewhere else. Uh, and until you can come around and be coached uh, and treat people with respect, you're not going to play. Okay, that kind of leads into the next thing, the bad attitude and the bad language, or sorry, bad body language. But uh, when I, I feel like that's a barrier to coaching. I feel like that's a barrier to communicating with your teammates. So until you get those things straightened out, I can't coach you, so you can't play. Just an example is uh, kids roll their eyes. If I'm talking to a kid, and I'm trying to correct him or I'm trying to give him some piece of information to make him a better football player, and he rolls his eyes at me, and he gets to go stand on the sideline. I, I'm not going to coach you while you're rolling your eyes because that tells me you're not listening. So if you're not listening to me, I can't coach you. I can't play you. And then the last thing is bad teammates. I don't want to hear guys down in each other. Uh, I don't want to hear guys uh, not supporting each other. Uh, just an example, during one game, Kid got blown up on a double team on our defensive line. We pull him out to kind of talk to him, explain to him the importance and why we need him to be able to get it done. And his first words were, uh, well, such and such got blown up on the double team too. Well, we're going to deal with that as well. But for you, you need to support your teammates. You need to do what you need to do to get the job done. So um, all this stuff that's going to be next is positive. But I, I do understand that there's a lot of things that – come with motivating players where there's consequences, where guys got to get things done uh, that they don't want to, or get, guys got to go sit out until they can get their attitude adjustment and all that. So uh, a lot of good, but there is some tough spots as well. So, okay. So first thing is really big on communicating every day, really big on making sure that our guys know that I care about them. Uh, I got on there a story from Tommy Lasorda's book. If you haven't read his books, he's got two of them, I believe. Very, very good, very interesting books. Uh, but he said he was the luckiest man on earth uh, because he got to play the great game of baseball and he got to work for the great uh, Los Angeles Dodgers and he got to live in America. Uh, so he took the experience and he just felt like he was really lucky to be part of something. Uh, and I really felt like that's something that I want to be. I bounce around a little bit, but when I'm somewhere, my feet are there and I'm excited to be there and I feel proud to be there. I, I feel like that with Brantley County. Uh, then another thing he talked about in his book, and this is even with the Dodgers, he would uh, tell them every day, or sorry, he would, he would talk about every day. He wanted to shake every player's hand and he wanted to talk to him every day. And he said he would never go more than 24 hours without shaking a player's hand uh, and talking to him. And I really took that to heart because there's times that after I'd read that and I looked back at my career and maybe I didn't talk to a kid for two or three days or a week, uh, 
and I, I just didn't want that to happen anymore. So it was really cool reading his book and seeing that. He had another thing where he talked about how he would say, uh, he would just yell, um, who loves the Dodgers? And they would all hit their knees and put their hands as high as they could in there and say, we love the Dodgers. So just real excited uh, to interact with his guys and show them how excited he was. So that, that's something that I took from the book is just communicating and being excited with your guys. Uh, so anyway, we're going to speak to our kids every day. I talk to them every day. I make sure I shake every one of their hands. I tell them how much I appreciate their hard work. And I think it eases kind of their mind and lets them know I appreciate them. And then when we do have to come in and correct them, they understand that that's just a correction. That's, that's not how we feel about them as a person. So uh, beyond just talking to them about football, I make sure I talk to them about other things. Uh, I hit the grades. I ask them about their family. I, I try to figure out, and ask them, what does what your mom do? What does your dad do? If they don't live with mom or dad. Hey, what's grandma do? Uh, what's grandma's best thing she cooks? And just try to get to know them personally and talk to them about those things. I try to find out if they have jobs, what music they like. Uh, and then, especially with music, if we, we kind of connect and we hit the same note, which I'm a big music guy, kind of talk about and give them songs to listen to and suggestions like that. But we're just trying to connect with them in any way we can so they know we care. And I, I think that goes a long way in terms of motivation. Uh, then that last part I got on there, when kids don't hear anything, I think they assume the worst. I'm like this with my boss sometimes. Like, I don't hear from him for a week or two weeks. I start wondering, like, oh, is he mad at me? Have I done something wrong? Uh, I think kind of kids feel the same way in most cases. So I really don't want them having that question in their mind of, is Coach mad at me? Or did I do something that Coach didn't like or whatever? Uh, so that's something I really hit home. We had a kid this year, our best, I talked about him already, but he's our best defensive player. I text him every Saturday, just really tight with him and say, hey, buddy, how things are going. But one week and I'd forgotten to text him. Uh, I didn't realize it till Wednesday. So I grabbed him in pre-practice, said, hey, man, I forgot to uh, text you Saturday. I said, I'm sorry, man. I, was, I guess I just got caught up or whatever. He goes, oh, man, goodness, coach, I, I thought you were so mad at me. So. I said, no, man, I'm not mad at you. You can always talk to me if you think that, but just got to make sure they know that, that you're there and you're supporting them. Um, and don't let them go too long in silence because it, it, it will hit them and they'll start to wonder too much. So we're communicating every day, our excitement to be around them and how much we enjoy being around them. Uh, okay, this is a big part of communicating that I've, I've learned as I've gotten older, apologizing when you're wrong. Uh, I don't yell a ton at kids. But there are times I have yelled at kids, and I, I really don't like to communicate that way. And I'll come back and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm sorry for communicating that way. I wouldn't want my boss to yell at me, and I'm sure you don't want me yelling at you. Uh, so just kind of apologizing when you're wrong or apologizing when you get on a little bit much. Just let them know that, that there's a human side to it and forgiving as well. When I was a young coach, I had a really hard time forgiving uh, players if a kid did something that I didn't want him to, or a kid kind of made a gesture, or a kid just, whatever reason a kid may have upset me or got, got on my wrong side, I uh, have a hard time forgetting it. And I'll take that personal and take it into the following week and the following week, or I, I just have a little bit of uh, hesitation towards putting that kid in or whatever, or coaching him as hard as I could. So I, I think apologizing and forgiving kids or apologizing to kids when you're wrong and forgiving them when, when they make uh, errors. Uh, it just goes a long way kind of kind of to build that connection. So we're going to communicate every day with our kids. We're going to talk to them and all that. So, okay, the next thing we do to really motivate our kids is we uh, do a competition every day. And I know a lot of teams are doing this, and you see a lot of this on – coaching boards and YouTube and all of that, but we're going to compete every day. It's, it's going to be a five minute or less period and we're going to get out there and uh, whatever the competition is, we're going to have two kids compete against each other. We'll do a couple of practice rounds and we'll pick two kids. We'll say, okay, uh, Joe, you're up and Bill, you're up. And then we'll tell the rest of the team, hey, you guys got to pick who's going to win this thing. And they'll get behind whoever they think is going to win it. And then we'll compete in the losing team uh, they'll do five up downs. So we were at a clinic earlier this year, my head coach and I, and he said, uh, he was in a different room, but he said one of the coaches had talked about, instead of just always making it negative and stuff, when you're competing, 
throw a little positive in there. Maybe maybe the winners get Gatorade instead of water or something like that. So we're gonna maybe next year try to award the winners some of those days, uh, bring some popsicles or something. But we're definitely gonna compete every day on defense, and we're gonna do it in a variety of ways. And these are reasons. What kids are our kids? We want to just love winning, whatever it is, whether it's uh, in the game, whether it's in a drill whether it's on the sideline and doing whatever, we want our kids to just, just love winning. We think the more times we can put them in a spot where they win or lose, we can get them there. Uh, we want our kids to have fun. I, at the end of the day, I want kids to want to come back to practice tomorrow. And I know when I played, it was a grind, and our coaches pushed us, and there were times that you just, you just did not want to be there. But it was either get a job or come to practice. So we always kind of came back for that reason. And I don't know that that's the case always now. So we want to have fun. We want our kids, when they get done or they're sitting in class the next day at 2.30, we want them to say, hey, I can't wait to get out to practice. I can't wait to be part of it today. So that's the other reason. Uh, and then we want kids to support their teammates. That's why we added in where you're going to bet on a teammate. We want them over there supporting them, uh, rooting them on. When I first got to Brantley, uh, that wasn't always the case. They, they would root against the opposite guy instead of rooting for their own teammates. And that's something that we really talked about and really emphasized and pushed this year was, hey, you got to root for your teammates. You got to get behind that guy and lift that guy up. You can't worry about the other side. So those are the three reasons we compete. Uh, I've got some examples of competitions we can do on this next one. So uh, we do a ton of different competitions. Uh, Sometimes football related, sometimes not. But I don't want to repeat them to the point where they get kind of monotonous. I was with a team once, and we would do paper, rock, scissors like every other day. And it just got to a point where it was just kind of a goof off period. We'd do quick paper, rock, scissors and get out of there. Uh, I didn't want that. I want our kids out there having a little bit of fun and mixing it up. So you can see all these different things we do. We do more than these. These are the ones I kind of came up with. But uh, I put these ones in blue here that I wanted to talk a little bit about. This bag tackle relay races, we'll just get split. The, we'll split two teams up. Instead of having two guys compete, they're going to compete in teams. Um, we'll put a bag 10 yards away. But then what we'll do is we'll bring an opposite guy from the opposite team over, and he'll block. So we're going to mix in our block destruction stuff. Um, and then we're going to have them beat that block. And then they're going to run down, and they're going to make a tackle on that bag. And we're going to emphasize our, our finished means. So we're going to hawk tackle that bag, and we're going to finish it mean, and then we're going to come back. But we're going to work in some football-related stuff in that, and then the whole team's going to go. So that was one. Uh, we'll do the same down here, this sled block destruction team race. We'll go over on the five-man. We'll put them in a line on one end of it. And then uh, we have to go clear down and block destruct each of the five uh, dummies on the sled and then there'll be a six guy from the opposite team or we'll put a double team out there and uh, they'll have to beat that double team and then they'll have to make that tackle. So we're gonna emphasize some football stuff there too. Uh, they, they're, this bag, or sorry, this tug of war wheel one, what we'll do is we'll take that tackling wheel and we'll, uh, on either side, we'll have a guy wrap around it and then they'll have to pull a tug of war. They'll be on a five yard line and whoever pulls the guy against the line. Uh, Sometimes it doesn't go well. So this year on the tug of war, before I figured out how to do it correctly, I had them grab the handles on there uh, instead of the whole tackling wheel. And we put two guys on each handle on either side and uh, said go. And then all of a sudden they both pull and those handles ripped right off. So it's kind of funny. Uh, and they all looked at me and they freaked out because we just ripped this tackling wheel our coach had spent hundreds of dollars on. And I just said, oh, crap, and took off running. And then they all just ran to their – individual spots it was a pretty funny experience for us so uh we had a little fun with it but sometimes you gotta kind of figure these things out as you go and then this last one i got down here is this uh emphasis trivia not every day i don't think you have to go out there and physically uh compete with each other so what we'll do is we went through a three-game stretch where we only had one takeaway as a defense uh, and it wasn't something that we were really proud of so i went through and I just Googled 10 questions about like records for, for takeaways. And I don't know what they were, but who had the most interceptions uh, in college football so far this year? And 
one of them, I can't remember what it was, but one of them was, uh, the answer was Dick Knight Train Lane, but it was all about special, or sorry, it was all about takeaways. So they got to pick a guy from each team and uh, whoever got the most questions right won. But it was just a way for us that week to emphasize takeaways in a way that kind of hit home. And then uh, it was pretty cool. And then the one answer was Dick Knight Train Lane. So when you see here, we get to some of this other stuff, some of the visual stuff. Uh, on the cards for their game, on the wrist coaches, I put a, a train that was kind of rolling through the night and it brought the kids back to that concept of takeaways. Uh, and we had three takeaways that week. So it was just something to kind of build it all together and link them back together. Sometimes we'll have coaches compete, uh, whatever it is, one-on-ones or something. We'll have, we had two younger defensive coaches, so they might do one-on-ones or something like that. So just do a lot of different things to kind of have a little fun. Our, our kids mostly uh, enjoy this football golf. And what we do is we take a tackling wheel and we put it, we have this hill out on one of our practice fields and we kind of put it on the other side of that hill and we'd start maybe 150 yards away and then the kids would kick it. Uh, just like playing golf, two teams, the guy would kick it and whoever got in that hole in the least amount of kicks would win or whatever. So we're doing a lot of different types of things. Uh, sometimes we make them up on the spot. Sometimes there are things that we've seen on YouTube or on some of the coaches' uh, websites and things like that. But we're going to compete every day. And our, our kids really enjoy it and they have fun with it. Um, so it's something that we really like to do. It's something that motivates them defensively that they know when they get over there, they're going to have a little bit of a uh, five-minute period to get them rolling. So. Uh, another way we motivate our players, and I, I think a lot of teams do this, but not every team I've been with is, is graded practice or film practice, but it's really been good for us uh, where I'm at. They did not grade practice before I got there defensively. So when I got there, we really struggled to play fast and play to the football on defense. One or two guys only were getting to the football. So you got eight, nine, ten guys just kind of walking or doing their job or whatever and it's hot in south georgia so our kids really felt like they were flying around and they felt like they were working hard and they felt like they were doing everything we'd ask but then you get on film and they're just kind of walking well i remember as a player thinking sometimes like man i was doing my best or flying around or whatever and then you'd watch the game film and you'd say dude i was not quite what i thought i was so i really think it's important to show kids how they practice and then that light bulb sometimes will go off. They'll say, well, maybe I wasn't going as hard as I thought I was, right? It was hot, and I could have swore I was giving it everything I had, and then they see that, and it kind of goes off. So uh, I watch every player every day in practice. I grade out my position group, which is DBs, and send them notes every day. I try to send them five or six notes for practice, but just ways to show them, like, hey, this is what we want or we don't want. And I ask the position coaches to do at least one day minimum a week. So. I really think it goes a long way in motivating kids when they can see what you're talking about. Cause they, they just don't always feel it uh, when they're out there. And then the other thing I'll do is try to pay attention to the scout team and then uh, really point them out when they do a good job, uh, really compliment it. I'll put it in those notes. I'll send it to those kids as well. Uh, I'll make a big deal out of it when we get back out on the field. Uh, I really like to grab a scout team kid when we're sitting in the coach's office as a group as he's walking by and just say, hey, man, that play you made yesterday on play seven, you got to go back and watch it because it's one of the best scout team plays I've ever seen. And that kind of gets those guys motivated and fired up and flying around, which causes the defense then to have to do the same thing to be able to defend those kids. So it's really important for us to do that in practice. Really lucky, too, and I kind of want to point this out. We've got our offensive line coach runs our scout team and just loves football. He's a guy who does a good job, and I, I couldn't have thank him enough for the way he ran our scout team because sometimes you get a coach over there that doesn't want to do it. But um, he did a tremendous job keeping those guys motivated, which kept our guys motivated and working hard too. So really big on grading practice if you can. I know sometimes it, you don't have the time for it. Um, I'm lucky enough to be in the fourth block weightlifting class. It's football only during the season, so it, I get the time to do it. But uh, if you got the time, I, I really think it goes a long way to motivate those kids to be able to see themselves. So, uh, okay, here's something kind of 
things that I, I don't know how many guys are doing this, but these are some of the things that I really feel make a huge difference with our kids. Uh, each Friday, I'm going to write a personal note. So I go out and buy a bunch of envelopes, and then I'll print off these little personal notes. Uh, and then on the back of them, and I'll show it to you here in this next slide, but on the back of them, each position coach will hand write the kid a note and then seal it in that envelope and put the kid's number in the front of the envelope. And then we hand them out during our defensive meeting. Really motivating the kids. I tried this, must have been four or five years ago, I did it. We had a big game. We're playing a ranked opponent. We needed to win it to get into the playoffs. And I did this with the kids. Uh, and they said it made all the difference. And they said it really fired them up and it made them feel special and made them want to kind of just make sure they got the job done. And then the following week, I didn't do it. We went back to just a normal game. And uh, we're like, Coach, where's, where's our note, man? Where's our, where's our letter? Where's our envelope, man? And uh, so after that, ever since that week, I've, I've always done it. Uh, when I got here, we started doing it. Uh, I, before that, I'd done them all, just me for the whole defense. But I'd been on smaller teams. Uh, here, our position coaches do it. And I'll, I'll kind of show it to you, but our kids, Something about opening that envelope and getting that that personal note uh, is really motivating to them. Then the other thing is on the wrist cards. I kind of talked about it just a little bit ago, but I'm gonna put some kind of visual on them to bring them back to our message. Whatever our emphasis is, whatever our message is, I want those guys to kind of have that visual. Uh, again, kind of the same deal. I put it on a card one week, and then the following week I didn't put it on there, and they're like, "Coach, where, where's their picture, man?" I, kind of look at that during the game when things get tough. So I'll show you what those look like, but it, it's something that our kids have really enjoyed everywhere I've been. So uh, over here on the left is an example. Just got this little meme or whatever you call these things, but uh, it's got a little quote and you can see Einstein there. It's got our, our emphasis. And then what I'll do is I'll cut that thing out. And uh, on the back, whatever the player is, each one's going to be different. Each one's going to be personal. I might say, hey, buddy, your, your greatest strength is your speed. Make sure you play fast. Uh, make sure you keep your outside arm free. Or I might put something like, hey, you struggled this week in practice. Don't worry about that. Uh, it's a big week for you. You can make some big plays for us. Whatever it is, I'm putting something personal to that week. Um, a lot of time for the scout team guys, the guys that probably aren't going to get in, I'll put something along the lines of appreciate your hard work. Um, love that you made the team better. If your chance comes tonight, make sure you make the most of it, things like that. So these make a huge difference for us. It's something that I'm proud that we do. Uh, and it's something that it's going to take probably an hour a week to do. And it's definitely worth it to me. So and you see these are our risk coach cards. They get all of our calls on them. Uh, at the top, everything we got comes back to these three things to play fast, take the ball, finish mean. But then down here in the red part, empty the tank. This was our last game this past year. It was our playoff game. Uh, we went in as a four seed, playing a one seed, a team that was extremely good and extremely talented. But I just wanted our kids to know empty the tank. So this, this might be it. And if it is, make sure you leave it all out there. So our kids uh, really come to enjoy those things or whatever. So trying to visually set them up, hey, this is something special. So uh, this is a little side note on our, our wrist cards. We got defensive wristbands, which they hadn't had in the past, only offensive ones. And it, it's kind of funny. We talk about motivating the defensive player. Somewhere along the way, week two or week three, kids started kind of sneaking to me as the defensive coordinator and said, hey, coach, you, you think Coach uh, Cannon will be mad if I just wear the defensive card and not the offensive one? Or uh, Sorry, the defensive band and not the offensive one? I said, hey, buddy, you better wear that offensive one. He's the head coach. But it's, it's kind of cool to see those guys come over and start really wanting to be part of the defense and starting to feel like the defense is special. So just all these little things we're doing to try to get our guys fired up and want to play some defense. Uh, okay, weekly awards. We do a lot of weekly awards. I guess I'll kind of start at the bottom on this one. I want to recognize and reward kids. Uh, as much as I can without giving false praise. So if there's anything I can do to get kids some attention uh, and make them feel special, I'm gonna do that as much as I can without giving false praise. I, I don't wanna just tell a kid good job when he doesn't do a good job, but any anything I can highlight or emphasize, I'm gonna put that kid out in front of the group and I'm, I'm gonna love them up and I'm gonna 
make it feel like he, he did the best thing that ever had happened or whatever. So we have four weekly uh, certificate awards based on the three things we do, play fast, take a ball, finish mean. But then we also have a scout team player of the week award. Uh, I think that one's pretty important. We do a good job. That's, that's the last one. And I always tell them that's the most important one. So I want guys over there making us better. So I'll nominate guys. I'll give them a piece of candy, which I'll show on this next slide. Or I'll, get, I'll nominate as many as I can that did a great job. Uh, but only one will win the award. Then we have a couple special awards, a couple kind of prop awards as well. So I'll show those to you guys. But again, just as much praise as I can give kids and much, as much recognition, as much attention as I can give kids uh, each week to just keep bringing them back to, hey, we're part of something special. Okay, so during the game, um, any coach can nominate this as well as they watch the film. Sometimes a player will text me and say, hey, coach, did you see such and such on play, whatever. Uh, he was flying around. It was awesome. So if a guy's flying around, he's going to get extra. We talked about kind of just extra effort, extra speed. But he's going to get this extra gun, throw them all one that's got it. Um, like for kids to nominate themselves. So if you feel like you've had a great play, take – Take that play and be confident about it. Uh, have some fun with it. So if a kid comes and says, Coach, watch play 104. Uh, man, I flew around. I ran that kid down from the backside. Uh, I think I deserve it. Well, we'll look at it. And if, if he was flying around, he's going, he's going to get the extra. Takeaways we give paydays for. Uh, want to really pressure the football and really emphasize it. I think you get what you emphasize. That's our way of recognizing it. One thing we might do a little bit different than other teams, we consider a three and out or a four and out a takeaway. If we can get those guys off the field on three plays or four plays consecutively and they have to punt the football or turn it over on downs, that's huge for us. We consider it We consider it a takeaway. So come in, give them all payday. If you had a forced fumble, if you uh, recovered a fumble interception, or you made the play on the three and out or four and out, then and we're going to do it. Uh, we also give it – we take care of defensively the kickoff unit and the uh, punt block, punt return unit. So if they block a kick there, we're going to get it. If they force a uh, takeaway there, we're going to give it to them as well. But, again, just emphasizing those things we want. And then the, the uh, finish mean, the crunch bar, a big hit, uh, lift and drive where you can feel your force. You can see it on the film. And, again, finish mean. But we always tell them, mean but clean, mean but clean. No dirty plays, uh, no penalties that are going to get us in trouble. And then the last thing down there is we tell them, you get a state dinner if you score on defense. Uh, we didn't do it this year to our last game of the season. Finally got one, a kid stripped it right into the hands of a linebacker. He ran it in. So both those guys uh, told him I'd take them to a state dinner. Now, I haven't been able to get either of them to the steak dinner because one's got a girlfriend he can't get out of the house and then the other one we haven't seen much of lately but uh if you score on defense i'm gonna personally take you to a steak dinner so just really want to emphasize those things and reward them but again these these are the ones that we're we're highlighting so uh here's what the certificates look like i make them on my home computer and i just get on i use microsoft word and i put that uh, watermark on there and then i put all that stuff and then basically that, that small fine point just says, hey, because of your efforts, our team is better and we appreciate it and kind of see how it just does it. And then we print it out on card stock and each week I just put their name on there and we're going we're gonna to level them up and hand them out and make a big deal out of it when kids earn those awards. Uh, to take the ball one, that would be the only one that sometimes we won't get. We don't get a takeaway. We don't get a three and out, a four and out. Then, then that one we don't give. But those other ones we're going to give. I know when I got here, uh, one of the coaches asked if we're going to give the awards even if we lose. To me, yes. The things we want, we want all the time. Win or lose, the things that we emphasize, we're going to get more of. So we do a, a, we just make a big deal out of guys doing things that we really emphasize and that we really want. So those, those are, like I said, the foundations of our defense. But uh, – the kids love this stuff. I know that some of them will put it on their social media. Uh, I've had teachers in the building come and say, hey, such and such was showing off his awards. Really cool you do those things or whatever. So I think it's just a way to draw those kids in and make playing defense special. They're, they're not going to score very many touchdowns. They're not going to make any catches. They're not going to get a run to football. Uh, 
So I got to I got to find my way to get them some attention and get get them some recognition. So it's one of the things we do. So we'll also do a takeaway board. So you can kind of see it there, and uh, it's really a pretty cool thing that we did. I made this thing. I went through and I, I printed out the takeaway letters and the, the logo. And then down here, if you can see, it says takeaway elite. And I wanted those guys to feel elite. When I first got to, to Brantley, uh, they hadn't had a lot of success. They won two games a year prior, only made the playoffs two times. So when I started using words like elite, some people in the program were kind of laughing about it. They, they thought it was kind of silly or funny. Uh, but I want our kids to feel elite. I want our kids to feel like, uh, when they go on that field, they're going to be able to do something that's special. So I put it on there. This took a long time. I had to go through the Zacto knife and cut out all those letters. And, uh, and I hodgepodge it on there. I went with my wife to uh, Hobby Lobby to get all this stuff. It ended up being about an eight hour job. So next year, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get online and just get custom stickers made and put on the canvas. But you can get the can't really see it, but you can get this easel for like 20 bucks at Hobby Lobby if it's something you wanted to do. And then the uh, canvas is only four or five bucks. So uh, something we really do, and then you can see they sign their names. But next year what I want to do, I want to mix it up because I do want to really emphasize getting takeaways in games. So this year they could pick either marker. We had them both on there. But next year we're going to go blue for practice um, and then gold for games just to get a little more attention. Uh, sometimes we will take this out to practice with us. There's one point in the year I talked about, we had like a three game stretch where we weren't getting very many takeaways. So we took the board out to practice one day and I went to the local bakery and got some uh, apple and cherry turnovers. And we put them out there on a stand with some Gatorades and we told them, hey, if you get a takeaway, if you get a turnover, you're gonna sprint over there, you're gonna eat you a turnover and you're gonna drink some Gatorade and you're gonna sign the board. We're gonna love up on you for a second. And it doesn't take long. Uh, it didn't miss, mess up our flow of practice or anything like that. So we did that. And then all the guys, it was pretty cool. All the guys on the sideline that uh, aren't doing anything over there, aren't getting in on the scout team, they kind of made a little line and high five the guy, really put a good emphasis on the takeaways. Um, and everyone had a really good time with it. So it, it was a pretty cool way to get the takeaway board instituted and used. And then at the end of the year, whoever gets us the most, they get to keep it. So. Uh, the kid that ended up winning it, I didn't think it was the kid that was going to get it, but he got it. He was really proud. He, he shook my hand. And he stopped in my classroom a couple times and said, Coach, man, I, I just really can't believe I got it. I appreciate it. Got it hanging in my bedroom. Uh, so he really took it special, and it, it was something that's pretty cool for us. And I know some other programs do it, but uh, to me, it's, it's cheap, it's easy, and it's just another way to recognize our kids and something that our kids really enjoyed. So. The other thing we got here uh, is this beware of dog chain. I know a lot of guys have the turnover chains. We don't do it for turnovers. I was listening to Jamie Chadwell uh, on a podcast. And he was talking about a kid he had at North Greenville. And the kid was uh, the kid was just a, a crazy kid. And he kept dog food in his locker and a dog collar and a leash. And when he'd get out of the practice field, he'd bark at people and chase them down. And uh, he just said, that kid was a dog. And, and Kids didn't want to play with that kid. Kids, kids didn't want to mess around with that kid or whatever. But they said just a great leader as far as attitude, defense, and I guess just had this kind of poise about him that uh, made him stand out. So they would always say, beware of the dog and things like that. So it made me think. And I got on Amazon. I found this. It's basically this beware of dog thing was just metal. And uh, it's meant to be put on a fence, but I painted it up gold and blue. And then bought a dog leash that was gold and put it around there. We got it attached or whatever. So what I wanted to do originally was we said, hey, this is a toughness award. This is a confidence award. But it's got to be backed by your play. And we want it self-nominated. I want my guys to be able to stand in front of the room and say, listen, I get the job done. And I'm proud I get the job done. And I'm going to get it done again next week. Uh, it didn't go well this year. So the kids loved it. And I let them all take pictures with it in the locker room and stuff. I try to get them fired up. But uh, we just had, a, when we did it, kids had a, just a little bit too much ego. Someone else nominated themselves. Oh, well, hey, he doesn't deserve it. Or hey, instead of kind of 
pushing for themselves. Like I deserve it because of this and showing some of their plays. They, uh, they just kind of got their feelings hurt. So I'm bringing it back next year. I just got to find a way to get our kids to be able to confidently present themselves uh, without bringing down their teammates. But the kids really did love it and it looked cool and all that. So we're going we're gonna to come back to it. We're going to try to find a way to institute a little bit better. But again, just one of those things, it's, it's something special for our kids. Um, it's tangible. They love it. They like to they like to wear it around, and hopefully next year we can get them to where they're wearing it on the sideline and and proud of who they are uh, and wear it confidently. So those those are kind of the things we go through, whether it's the certificates or the candy or the takeaway board, whatever it is. Those are the things we're doing to recognize our kids. And again, we we don't want to give them false praise, but we do want to emphasize and push. Um, Hey, get the job done, and we want we want to really make sure that they feel proud of who they are and what what they're part of. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, another thing we do, we don't do a team highlight video every week. Uh, so we institute a defensive highlight. We're only able to do it on home games because of logistics and the way we travel and we eat together before the game. And sometimes we got to live early for pregame because we've got some long trips. So we only do it for home games, but. Uh, we're gonna have a defensive highlight video. Uh, I'm gonna try to get as many kids in it from the games prior that haven't been on a highlight video yet. I'm gonna try to get as many as many in as I can. I like to try to limit it to takeaways and sacks and uh, pass breakups, tackles for loss, things like that. But if a kid hasn't been in it in a couple of weeks and he makes a tackle for a two or three yard gain, I'll I'll put it in there and I'll, I'll let him get some attention. Uh, I picked all the music this year because I didn't know the kids well and kind of just trying to figure things out. But next year, I want to make sure I let the kids pick the music. Um, they got to make sure they find something with a clean version, because usually stuff will get put out in public. But I want them to be able to pick it. Um, and then the other thing is I'll end it with a challenge message. So at the end of it, it's going to say, like you saw the Einstein thing that said, adversity introduces a man to himself. So the last slide that week said, uh, who will you meet tonight? So just talk to them about challenge yourself. Who, who are you going to meet when you, when you enter, introduce yourself? And it does a good job. So our kids love it like most kids do. Um, I use We Video to do the highlight videos. I, I haven't figured the huddle thing out how I, to be able to manipulate it like I'd like. And I'm not quite tech savvy enough to use some of the, the major uh, things. But really, if, if kids are seeing themselves and they're hearing a song they love, they usually get into it pretty good. So. Uh, as the year went on, we have a defense meeting. That's when we show it. And sometimes offensive guys would kind of sneak in there. They want to see what's going on and see what all the hype was about. So it was kind of cool to just highlight the defense in that regard. Game notes, kind of like practice notes. Uh, we want to make sure, and I think it's very motivating for kids to, to see themselves, whether it's, it's good or bad. It, if they can see those things, they get them corrected better, and we, we motivate them. Uh, so what we do is we'll send them to the kids on Sunday, and then on Monday we're going to ask them about them. I don't like to watch films a whole group because I feel like if I'm talking to one guy, I'm monopolizing time in there. So I ask the position coaches to send them to their kids. I send them to mine, and then we'll ask them about the notes that we have in there. Uh, if we find kids aren't watching film, what I'll do is I'll put a password in there, and then the kids will have to tell me what the password is. And if they can't tell me what the password is, and I know they haven't watched it, uh, and I tell them, if you don't, if you don't, just, just goes back to if I can't coach you, I can't play you. If you don't watch film, if you don't watch these notes, it's only going to be 10 or 15 minutes. If you can't, uh, if you can't watch the film, I can't play you. And I tell them, there's 10,080 minutes in a week. I need 10 of them. I need 10 of them for game film. That's it. So we really don't have a, too many problems with that, but uh, definitely something. Definitely something we want to do. I got on there next year. We want kids to show us pressure in the ball. That's going to be a big emphasis for us. We only had, I want to say, off the top of my head, 15 takeaways. But I want them to come in and tell me, hey, play 17. Watch. I, I pressured the ball. I put pressure on it. I tried to strip it. Uh, so that's something we're going to try to get out of film where they're coming back and telling us something that they, they did well, and we're going to reward that somehow. So just – same thing, when kids see themselves, it helps connect the dots between what you're saying, uh, helps motivate them to kind of push it to the next level. So, 
Uh, we're going to give them a lot of ownership. I try to tell those kids, this is your team. This is your defense. And some places it's happened in three or four weeks. Some places it's been two years before I felt like I could turn it over to them. Uh, but I, I want to, as soon as possible, tell them, hey, this, this is your defense. I want you to be able to do what you guys want to do. I want you guys to have great input, and I want to be able to make sure that um, you guys are running the show here. I know I read the article the other day with Kalen, um, the board from previous at IU, which I'm a Hoosier fan, but you talked about, in a, or that article talked about, like how much can you push the kids to lead the team before it's kind of missing the point. So there's this balance in here between what am I doing and what are you guys doing uh, in order to make this team yours. But as much as I can give them that they can handle, I want to give it to them. And I think they find that really motivating. So uh, Thursdays, we do our pregame walkthrough, but we have our everyday period uh, and our indie period. But I let our kids do it all. They, they're going to pick a competition to do on Thursday. They're going to run it all. Uh, they're going to do all of our everyday drills, and they're going to do our indie drills. And you, you can see right away if, they, if they're owning it and if they're leading it. But that, that's their chance to kind of show us. That's our chance to assess them uh, as far as – are you guys are you guys in on this? Are you guys taking leadership of this thing? Are you taking it over? Uh, I let players make calls on the sheet. You'll see I got a picture over here in a second, but it, there's situations where I, I'll call in a, a choice call and I'll let the players kind of call it play. And they really like that. Uh, senior nights usually are opponents that aren't very great. So if we're in a position to do it, I like to let I like to let our seniors, uh, specifically a middle linebacker if he's a senior. I like to let them call the whole game. Uh, I know two years ago, we're, we're, we're rolling and we're playing well, and our offensive coordinator, our head coach, comes on the headsets and he said, hey, I'm going to let the quarterback call a series. And our defensive line coach at the time said, oh, our middle linebackers called the whole defense tonight. So we're, we're going to try to let them have some ownership when we can. Uh, same with mottos. Um, we didn't have a motto here defensively last year, but the year before, we had one uh, at the school I was at, and it was heat, hustle, effort, attitude, tenacity. Uh, and then, then I turned it over to them, which I ended up leaving, but it was going to be SWAT. And that's something they came up with. And I don't remember all the letters, but they, they liked it. Uh, and it's something that they wanted to do. But I want to get to the point where we identify and we brand our defense based on what the kids want. Uh, Listen to the adjustments and recommendations. I want our kids to feel confident. We were in our playoff game. We had a huge fourth down. Uh, at the time, we're, we're down six to nothing uh, against a really good team. And then it comes up, and it's fourth and five. And our, the other team calls a timeout, and they, they come to the sideline. They said, Coach Fields, man, let's just, let's just send them all. Uh, and we had to call on the sheet. And I said, OK, if that's what you guys want, uh, we'll, we'll send them all. I want those guys to play confidently. It was a position where we could do it, and uh, and we did. We made the stop, and those kids, because of that, had a lot of confidence in the way they played the rest of that game. So that's something that we do. And the last thing, I, I think that's probably the most motivating thing we do is we're going to play kids as often as possible. We don't, we don't want kids to feel like they're never going to have a chance to get in. Uh, at the JV level on defense, we play every kid every game. In my position group, I put them on a rotation, and we live with the rotation. It's JV football. Uh, to me, it's about developing kids. It's about making kids fall in love with the game of football. I know numbers in our game are, are going down across the country. I think part of that is uh, kids no longer want to be out there if they don't think they're going to get a chance to play. So we play them all. Uh, we play them all on the lower levels. And then on the upper levels, we're going we're gonna to roll with them as often as we can. So uh, here's our wristband I talked about. You see right here at number 28, one LB choice. So our coverage is up here, but we get in a situation where I can let the kids call a play. I'm going to let them call it. I call it 28. And it's not completely free because we have a game plan in, so they know some of the things they should be doing. Uh, and usually they stick to that game plan. They're going to make a call. And we made some big plays on those, uh, and kids, kids will bring it back, and they, they love it. They feel good about it. So just a way to give them some ownership on our band. Um, Here's some other things that we've done. We're getting kind of close to the end here, but used to do defense and donuts. Our team, we feed them four days a week, uh, so I don't get a lot of chance to be with them. And 
individual spots, but we don't feed them on Wednesday. So I think next year we're going to go back to this, just position meals, either do it there in my classroom or have them over the house, let my wife cook for them and bake for them, kind of get them motivated in that regard. Uh, helmet stickers, position t-shirts, things like that. We used to have black jerseys, places I've been. I know everybody kind of the black shirts in Nebraska and all that. Uh, player tone setters. Uh, this is something I'm going to bring back next year. Right after that competition, I want a player, a leader to stand up and tell the team, hey, this is what we're going to do today. This is what we believe in. I want them just a one-minute speech to kind of set the tone. And then player versus coach challenge. Uh, the last school I was at, our goal each week was three takeaways. Uh, so if we got the three, our thing I said was heat, hustle, effort, attitude, tenacity. So I went out and bought all these exotic hot sauces um, and hot beef jerkies, Carolina Reaper beef jerkies and stuff. If we got the three takeaways, the coaches had to eat that hot stuff and at the team meal on Thursday. And if we didn't, the, the captains had to. And kids really enjoyed that and really had a lot of fun and bought into that. So uh, this is kind of the the end here in the conclusion, but when kids play for me defensively, I want them to feel like it was something special. I want them to feel like it was an experience that couldn't have gotten anywhere else, whether they go on to college to play, whether it's 10, 15, 20 years down the road and they're talking to their drinking buddies. Uh, I want them to say, man, when we played for Coach Fields, that's a guy who made a difference. That guy made it fun, and we felt like we were part of something special. Um, and I think we're getting that through to our kids. A lot of kids this year are like, Coach, I wish we could have had you for four years. Wish you could have been here before because I think we could have did special things. So it's just something um, that I've been lucky to work with head coaches that have, have put that message out as well. It's like, hey, first class experience. And I, I think our guys are getting that. And I, I really try to emphasize that and push that. But I want them to, to, to brag that they had the best experience in high school football out of anybody. So. Um, that's kind of what we did. Uh, if you got any feedback, there's my email again. I, again, I don't have social media, so you have to email me. But if there's anything guys that watch this are doing that they use to motivate uh, or make things special, especially for playing defense and getting those guys that maybe originally at the beginning of the year said, hey, coach, I think I'm just an offensive guy. If there's something you can do to convert that guy uh, or something you're doing that works for you, please send it along because try to make every day special with our kids. So. That's it. That, other than that, just thanks to Football Scoop and uh, thanks to all the guys that are putting these things out there and listening to them, making our profession just a little bit better. Appreciate it, Eddie. There are a lot of good ideas in there, man. Uh, but, you know, you talked about that competition period at practice at the beginning. How how long is that typically? Does it change day to day or is it a set five minute or 10 minute period you got working? Um, it's always going to be five minutes or less. We only get 50 minutes on defense each day. So, we're in and out of that as quick as we can. Um, we grab the kids, we get them going, and then uh, we'll do like two or three practice rounds and then that competition round they bet on, and we're doing those up-downs and getting out of there. But five minutes or less. Gotcha. I, I really like the uh, the code word or the password idea. That, uh, that's something I hadn't heard before. Uh, is, that, is that just you're your plugging in kind of a, a note into a, you know, a huddle clip uh, with, you know, the code word, whatever it is, and then and – then, when you ask them, they, they've got to get it back to you? Yeah, so when we first started doing that is when I was at Manchester. And uh, what we found was you could check their time or whatever on how much huddle they're watching, but kids would end up with 18 hours a day or something. So what they would do is they'd put it on and leave and forget to turn it off. So our defensive coordinator, he used to put in a verbal code, and he, he would have a password in there. So I kind of stole it from him, but I just do it as a note. And I'll send it – I usually send my stuff as a whole position group or as a whole defense, but those kids that aren't watching, I'll send them a separate individual with the passcode so they can't get help from their buddies. They got to go in there and find it themselves. So. That's smart. I, I, I really like that idea. And the, uh, the, the hot stuff idea at the end, you know, it doesn't, it's not hurting anyone. It it's, gets a couple laughs at the end. Uh, but I thought that was a really good idea. Yeah. Too. The kids, uh, the kids actually came up with that. That was something, our captain said, hey, let's let's do something. Let, let's challenge you, coach. If we get these takeaways, what are you going to do for us? And I said, well, what are you going to do if you don't get them? And then we just kind of that, – that's what we did. And it was because it was heat. But we just – whatever we can do to get those guys on board. So. Uh, l lastly, and you kind of led your presentation off of this, but how the heck did you get your wife on board with uh, with naming your, your, your firstborn after two of your high school coaches? 
uh, got really lucky. We uh, had made a deal that uh, if the first one was a girl, she got to name it. If the first one was a boy, I got to name it. So out of the gate, I, I got lucky there and had it. And I didn't say this, but if we would have had another boy, uh, I would have named him after my college coach, Steve Barrows. He, he's not coaching anymore, but he was my coach at Anderson University in Indiana. So I had her convinced for all the boys. Now, if it would have been a girl, I don't know. <laughs> That's great stuff. Appreciate you taking the time to join us, Eddie. Hey, thanks for having me, Coach. I really appreciate it.